Hi, welcome to the uh, Epon blog. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Much from Epon UK, and I'm here to talk to you about structuring functional orientated drawings and why you would choose it over the traditional, well, the, the traditional production drawings, as we used to call them. Okay, so um, first thing we'll, first thing we're going to do is cover the basics of functions and structuring. Um, if you don't know what they actually are, there's a really good reference on the page here. It's the IC81346, which is Structuring Principles and Reference Designations of, on how you can structure a product or a project depending upon your company needs. Okay, so what's the basics? Well, let's talk about an object. So we'll, we'll start with uh, maybe a motor. A motor is a fairly simple object to actually talk about. So we'll start with the function. So what's the function aspect? Well, basically the function is what it does. What's its main objective? Is it to transport something? Is it to feed a? Uh, is it to feed something into a machine? Is it to eject something out of a machine? Is it a mix? And um, lots of different ways you can use it, but the function aspect. And this is normally covered by a little, a little symbol, which is the equals one, just in here. So if we just get that a little bit bigger so you can see it. So yeah, we have that as the little equal sign just here. And this is uh, this is how we're going to structure it out into an EPLAN project. And you can see that. Over on the side just here, there's a few little sections over here. You can see the little equals. So you can see it's a machine op it's a machine operation, it's a valve control, it's something to do with lighting, maybe it's the emergency stop system. But we'll talk about motor. So basically for motors it could be a grinding motor, a positioning motor, a transport motor. It's physically what the main object of a motor is. Okay, moving on from there we then have something called the location. Okay, so location aspect. Where can you find it? And where you can find it is generally, is generally um, preceded by a plus sign. Okay, so we can see something in here as well. So there you see enclosure one. Yeah, so this motor is probably not in the enclosure, but it's going to be somewhere in the field, somewhere in the project, and that will have a name. Yeah, it's either on the conveyor or it's in a tank. Again, depending on what the motor actually does. Okay, so we have an equals and plus functional aspect on there. Next, we have the product aspect itself. This is generally procured by a, a hyphen. So there we go. Some people call it a dash, but yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a hyphen. And here we can say actually it's motor one, motor two, motor three. It could be two stereo motors. So we want to make sure it's M1, M2, so on and so forth. But again, this is the actual difference between the object itself. What does it do? What's its main objective? Where can you find it? And actually, what's its very distinct name? By doing this in, in, a, in, a, in a higher level, what you can actually work out is you can have very distinct names for an object that makes it easier for everybody to find it. And I mean everybody. The panel builder probably doesn't care what it does. He just wants to know where to find it. The guy who needs to physically fix a project when something goes wrong, he probably doesn't want to know the function and he wants to know where to find it. The guy who physically builds it, as in the technicians are actually building it all up or wiring to it, yeah, he doesn't care about the function. He just wants to know where to find it and which particular one he's actually using. So those three aspects allow you to see a project in three different ways. Those three different ways can mean a hell of a lot of data for the right person at the right time. And that's why in Epan we teach the structuring system for when we do projects. The last one we actually see down in this bottom corner is a separate reference, it's the IC61355, and this is the documentation classes. So then if you have a really big project, a huge thing, and you have to go through paper and paper and pages and pages, we can break down the page structure as well. So over here you can see we have EFS1. So that one, you can bring in this and sign. The ampersand. As we say in English, yeah, not all great at that one, but yeah, the ampersand on there, that, that then precludes the actual page itself to tell you what type of page you're looking at. So here you can see, you can see an electrical schematic. If I go a little bit further up, I can then see things like a summarized pass list and EPA1. I can see a cable overview. But again, this is going to make sure that the right person gets the right information as quickly as possible. Again, by using functionalization, by using function orientated drawings, three different views, the three different professionals, 
documented in the correct manner means everybody sees the project how they need to see it.